Okay, in this portion of this video, I'm going to be talking about trading skills, how to become an excellent trader, how to not scumbag, and how to understand leverage. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover, people aren't going to like to hear. It may offend somebody, but it's all within the best intentions. You can take it as it is. I have a lot of experience doing it, and people ask me uh, all the time for, you know, a legitimate reason. Uh, I'm one of the biggest traders in both Standard and uh, not really Nemesis League yet, but I will be there very soon. <clears throat> Let me close some of these windows from the last uh, video and I'll get right to it. The first thing I wanted to talk about is Poe and Paid to Win. Oh shit, hold on, someone just got rolled. Let's tune into that for like a few seconds. Level 93. Number 12. Alright, I'll have to catch that VOD later. <laughs> Alright, slide derail. Sorry, guys. Um, pay to win. And I like the fact that po, Poe's content is released. Every, every bit of po, Poe's content and what it has to offer is given to you for free however that does not make this game not pay to win and I will explain that I'm just not I'm not gonna just sit there and leave it at that but I feel and I I can you know confidently say that the aspect of pay to win is providing you an in-game advantage by giving money to the company to get features that other people don't have access to and that is stash tabs because I have 90 plus stash tabs I'm able to buy myself more trading leverage and what I mean by this is I can collect a mass amount of items and sell them you know at the rate I'm happy and content with selling them at like I don't have to push my items out of my inventory because I'm running out of space now the argument can be made well you can just make new accounts hedgy and make alts and use those but let's be real if I'm spending time dual boxing an alternate account trying to find these damn items trying to update the threads on two different accounts of these items I'm wasting so much time that it's completely inefficient so the fact that I'm able to have a massive shop provides me a lot more of an audience or a customer base for selling and trading I don't I'm never in trade chat spamming my items you will never see my name affiliated with a unique or a gem or whatever because I just think that's a giant waste of time my strategy is to get enough stash tabs organize it in a way that I can go and find the item very quick off a thread or off the forum and trade that person look at the item give them a price agree upon it go to act one trades done bada bing bada boom go back to mapping if I'm having to log different characters all that bullshit it's gonna increase my play time by like I'll be doing that 80% of the time I'm logged in game instead of just mapping and actually playing the game and this game is all about item progression and item progression is enhanced by accumulating wealth so in that aspect Poe is pay to win in that but I mean the game company has to make money it, uh, and I don't mind supporting it I mean I myself I've spent 600 and I think over 650 dollars just in supporter packs because I love this I love the guys I love how they release the content they're always on top of their shit so I have no problems paying for these stash tabs but to say that they're not pay to win this is not a pay to win game is I think ignorant or incorrect because the trades always come to me I'm not having to go to the trades that's that's the big thing you're you're able to stand ground on the price that you think is firm and the customer makes a choice of whether or not to buy it or not and if he doesn't want to buy it then you know no harm done they will move along whatever we'll move our separate ways but I always sell items for what I think that they were worth um, if that means I accumulate more and more items over time, so be it. I mean, I have no problem selling stuff. I have no problems getting rid of it. You know, it's it's an ongoing process. 
Um, one of the things as a trader, you want to be polite. There's no reason to be a dick bag off the bat. You're going to get a lot of nasty tells saying, lol, I see this a lot, uh, this face. I see that more than anything because there people just see exalts and they see a number in front of it and that's the face that they're gonna give me unless they actually know what the fuck and what like what the deal is like they understand crafting they understand how rare an item is or an affix you know they understand how good it is and what perfect means um, but I'm always I'm always polite the only time that I'll kind of you know deviate from being polite is when the guy is just spamming me with tells uh, I give them a price if they don't agree they don't agree I say good luck to you I hope you find what you need um, if it's something expensive uh, you'll see me do this a lot when I'm streaming and someone if something's expensive like 25 20 exalts or 15 or if it's on nemesis I ask them what build they are I even help them um, I'm telling I tell them oh you wanna buy this ring but your blood magic okay I recommend that you don't buy this ring because you're gonna be overpaying for something that's not great for your uh, build somebody else will pay a lot more than you will so therefore go look for something else or I can help you look for something else or you know I'm always trying to look out for them making sure that they're not overpaying for something that's not gonna be what they paid for for their build so awesome are you face breaker or are you this and if they are I almost know what it's less common in Nemesis obviously because Nemesis people seem to be more keen with uh, what they need and how builds work and how they synergize but um, for this example uh, I'm gonna use like standard there there's a lot of ignorant people on standard that are just starting out you know you can't knock on them everybody's new they're trying to learn but um, Oh, let me close this real quick. It's kind of distracting. They're trying to they're trying to learn, so I help them out. I'd be like, "Yo, don't get this item. Look for look for these stats, and then, you know, holla back." Or, I I don't really feel comfortable selling you 25 exalt item when it's shit for your build. So I'm not a complete scumbag, you know. I I do look out for the people. Um, I do have high prices, but. The prices are, are what they're worth. Like I honestly feel like that, and that's based off of mirrors. Uh, mirrors are top and perfect. Uh, okay, so always when you end the transaction, always say thank you, good luck. Even if they're just fucking foaming out the mouth, you know, and just there's no reason to not end it that way. Um, they can hate you all they want. They can do whatever. Just good luck. Um, sorry we couldn't agree upon the price. Uh, the, pr the item will be here if you decide later that you want it. Um, if somebody wants it and doesn't have the currency and I know what it's worth and I know I'm getting tells all about it every damn day, like every hour, uh, I'll, I'll often reserve an item. I'll be like, I'll give you like two hours to get the uh, get enough currency to liquidate something or, uh, you know, and uh, I'll let you get first dibs. But, you know, being nice, getting a good reputation. Uh, it's, it's always a useful asset um, what's it be firm okay yeah so be firm uh, don't you don't have to deviate from your prices um, if you have a lot of stash tabs and a lot of stash space you have the upper hand on them um, pick a price that you think is fair as far as you know from the other price checking video uh, if you feel like you need to get currency fast then I would consider slightly reducing it but honestly at the end of the day it's it's better to keep the item to find the right buyer than just to get rid of an item because no one sent you the tell who knows the next day the next patch there's a build enabler item and then all of a sudden these people need these particular uh, pieces of gear with these stats and then that that gear becomes like amazing and you underprice it by a lot okay establish equivalence so in order to save your time because your time is often valuable what I do is I establish equivalence of what I will accept as far as payment so that there's no argument and no debate uh, these ratios change from time to time I become uh, I kinda of rely on others when I'm not playing in the league but uh, 
if I need to fine tune it, but uh, if I want chaos, then I'll specify so. And if if I don't want any of these other orbs, then I'll increase these rates. That way, it's uh, less of an incentive for people to pay in smaller orbs, and more of an incentive for them to pay in chaos. Cause they're like, man, well, I don't want to overpay, but so I'll go ahead and pay the chaos. You know, that's a good strategy. And the reason why I have such a diverse selection of orbs is because that's the one I'll demand when I have a feeling or if I know an item is good and the guy really wants it and I'll go into explain that a little bit later but I'll demand an equivalent in a different orb so I'm kinda of really you know I'm kinda of sick of getting exalts right here like what am I gonna do with all these damn things so I've been starting to demand eternals or chromatics because I'm, I'm, I'm starting to replenish those because I used like a, th a thousand or so earlier trying to get three green or something in rainbow strides but um, demand the orb that you need the most I don't need jewelers I don't need fusings I'm good on those uh, I don't need alterations I guess I'll start demanding some chaos so instead of be being like oh I want two, two exalts I'll be like I want 40 chaos and they're like how about two exalts I was like nah I'd rather have 40 chaos so I'll make them do the work for converting their currency to give me the currency that I need. That way I'm not sp sitting there in fucking trade chat trying to convert my currency, wasting my time, not playing the game. And you can do that when you know how, when you judge how much somebody wants an item. And I do that quite a lot. People say that's kind of dirty, it's dirty play, but I mean they're paying equivalent, but they're giving me the orb that I want so that I never have to be the one in trade chat spamming for the orb that I need. I also will tell them, oh yeah, I take divines. You know, I'll take GCPs. I'm kind of low on those, you know. But I don't want fusings. I don't want jewelers. And if you're gonna pay in that, then you're gonna have to overpay by 20%. You can either, you know, take the time out of your day to convert them or not trade me at all. You know, I give them the ultimatum, and it's never been a problem. Um, scouring when I get low on scouring, I'll demand those alks. You know, those are always good, but. I needed a lot of Alks, Chaos, Chisels. That's how I acquired all these. I didn't actually farm all these or sit in trade chat all day acquiring these. These were all made based off of demands that I made from trades. You want this belt? All right, you can have this belt for 60 scouring. You know, you want this helm? I want 40 chisels. That's the easiest and best way to get the currency that you need without wasting time. It's like truly, truly min-maxing and will enhance your gameplay. But you can only do that when you know the item is hot shit. People aren't going to do it for some cr crummy item. If it's like some two chaos run of the mill, you know, they can get that shit anywhere. You just get what you can get. Get whatever equivalent they're going to give you. But build enabling items like jewelry, belts, shields, uh, this shield I paid 50 exalts for. I divined it like eight times. Amazing, amazing build or build enabler for like a physical wander or physical attack damage. Because it has 30% chance to block, it's giving me that edge to avoid reflect and you know make my build very, very smooth and scale my damage to where it's no risk. But you know prices on standard are very different from nemesis like that's but it applies to any any different uh, league all right oh yeah thread updates okay so what some people will do is they will when they poe xyz shit they will sort because they're sick and tired of having to deal with fucking people that don't play or old threads. They will adjust the date on when your shit was sold. Even if you're too lazy or don't feel like updating your shit, just going into your thread, adding a period right there, hitting submit will update your thread because the, the website will check this date right here. Last edited by Rotana. That means I'm still active. When people go to your page, and they see when was this guy last active when did he update this thread that date 
I also put it up here just so when people know when I add stuff. Okay, so this might be updated, right? That I was here, so that I actually still play the game. But this, that last time I added items to this shop was this date. So always keep your thing up to date. Maybe within, I, I would do it like once every three days, even if you don't add items. This will enhance the audience that is looking for your items. Not everybody does does like this uh, option right here, but some people do. I know for a fact because they're just sick and tired of that shit. Um, all right, so next. Identifying the buyer weakness. Okay, so this this might be this might piss people off a little bit, but I have kind of like a profit margin and a price range. It's very very small, but it's within 10%, right? So if I feel like something it would take uh, well, something would take about 10 exalts to craft, I'll charge seven. And then with that seven, I can go up or down, maybe like an X, you know. Uh, I could go down as low as six if it's like a bro, or I, or as you know, up, up to. What did I say? Did I say seven? Okay, I'll go as up, up one, for eight. Um, or I'll just keep it the same and I'll just demand the orb that I'm missing, like chance orbs. I'll just fucking re demand a ridiculous amount of chance orbs. Um, but what I mean by this is when I log into a game and I get a tell instantly and it looks something like this. Finally. That's the first tell I get. And I think, okay, I'm going to get paid. Somebody has been stalking me for many, many hours and is finally relieved that I logged on. So whatever the fuck is coming out of his mouth next is going to be he wants that shit so bad and I can charge almost whatever I want and he's going to pay. Okay, so automatically I get the upper hand. I'm like, okay, hi. You know, this is this is how the conversation conversation will go down. And they'll be like, uh, I'm wanting to buy something from your shop. As, a, as if I didn't already know from the words finally. Or, you know, huzzah, you're online. Or something, you know, along those lines. And I'll be like, uh, sure, what's that? And he'll, oops, I'm typing in global. And he'll be like, uh, oh, this ring. And I'll look at it and I'll be like, hmm. I would value it around seven exalts, but I'm kind of needing some chisels right now, and I know this guy really wants it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna charge him eight, eight exalt equivalent in chisels. So he'll be like, I don't have, I don't have uh, eight exalt in chisels. How about five eternals? So he's gonna overpay an eternal and be like, okay, that sounds all right. And or if he was like, I don't have that many chisels. I'll be like, he's like, can you just accept 8x? And I'm like, uh, not really, uh, but I'll give you like five hours where I won't, I promise I won't sell this item to get that much currency. And he's like, all right. And he just fucking goes to every trade channel. You know, I see, <laughs> I see his fucking spam of shit. And he's like talking to all his friends, updating his status, you know, <laughs> just going everywhere. You know, it's kind of like making them do the work. And so those, those are your grunts. Those are the guys that know how good an item is or just need that to complete their gear set. So that's where upper hand comes in. Being nice, you know, don't have to be a dick bag. I don't have to be like charging him 12 exalts for something I think is worth seven. I'm not cruel, okay? I'm, I'm going to just, you know, get a little bit more, you know, and a little and demand what I want. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Um, if somebody is not that interested in your item, you can kind of tell because the slow replies, um, and then you kind of sense weakness. So if you feel like the item is weak and you prefer currency now, then you pretty much take what you can get. You know, don't don't pester somebody. Be like, hey, I'm ready now. Are you there? 
uh, we can trade now, blah, blah, blah. Just keep pestering them because then it makes you sound too eager to sell the item like as if you were try you were struggling all this whole time. And then it gives them second thoughts about whether or not they actually want the item. And they're like, well, uh, this guy's trying to get rid of this item pretty quick. Now I'm hesitant to actually get it for this price. Don't be the eager seller. Stand your ground. Be firm. Be like, five exalt buyout. If they say, oh, I can offer four. I'm like, no, thank you. Thank you for your interest. That's what I say. And lo and behold, somehow they manage, or a lot of times they say, I only have four. And I don't back down. So I say, no, thank you, but thank you for your interest or thank you for inquiring. I say something along those lines. And then they say, and they don't say shit, right? So 15, 15 minutes later, he says, fine, just got five, act one normal. That's that's 90% of my trades happen just like that because I'm so good at price matching or price checking that people will meet me and I refuse to negotiate. My prices are, I mean, they're fair. Some people will say it's a uh, rip off, but those people that say that probably don't know how to acquire currency or believe that you have to farm and actually pick up the currency itself to earn you know and then they just see like oh yeah that's a ripoff that's like 10 hours of my time because their build sucks sucks shit at clearing shit and they're unlucky or whatever you don't have to even step foot in a map to earn currency you can start a currency base with just transmutations and augments I will go over over that in a different video I'm getting kind of exhausted right now because I've done this is like the third video because the first video was on mute the whole time but I wanted to uh, go over those points um, as far as uh, when you are the buyer it's this it's kind of the same thing it's the reverse don't sound so eager uh, kind of downplay the item be like uh, hi I wanted to buy the Amy uh, how much did you want for it and offer the currency that you have the most I I try to not trade for my chaos um, if possible I'll trade the, sh the shit orbs that I'm not using like fusings or chisels or whatever the fuck it is like if it's getting too big in my stash and I want to get rid of it I'll I'll offer that it will be like 12 12 chaos I'll be like how about 24 or 26 fusings and they're like mmm uh, do you have any chaos I was like I'm kind of low on them and they're like oh we'll pay half in fusing half in chaos you know stuff like that chaos is like a kind of like the stone of Jordan of Poe it's like it's like the dollar bill it's uh, very easy to trade e easy to move so try not to trade them until you get something that you really want because then that's when you really are gonna wish you want chaos or somebody wants exalted orbs you can get exalted orbs easy with chaos um, so don't don't be the eager buyer kinda downplay the item if he's like 12 chaos or bust then you just be like okay no problem good luck then you know just leave it at that and then he'll be like I want to say this only happens like 30 to 40 percent of the time they'll come back to me and be like okay I'll take I'll take your fusings or I'll take your scouring or whatever uh, it's it's more rare that they'll come back to me than uh, the item the person coming back to me uh, for the item but I'll inquire about it once and I'll just leave it about leave it at that I won't hype it up I'll be like come on man I've been waiting here you know I really need that item I won't say anything like that because he's just gonna keep that shit even more or charge you up the ass or he's not gonna be flexible at all so relax take a breather um, who knows you can log on a different character maybe I wouldn't do it the next day because if he's getting multiple tells really quick in the same week or in the same couple days then he's gonna think the item is hot shit and he should just wait it out if he still has that item in a week maybe message him on a different character hey 
uh, I would like to offer 24 chaos or, or 20 chaos and something like that. And then be like, all right, you know, he sat on it for a week, didn't get shit. He's willing to go lower on a different character, you know, something like that. That's also a good play as far as uh, trading. <laughs> holy holy I mentally ripped you off <laughs> it's not a rip off man I'm not out to rip people off I'm just out to make people pay what it's worth that's that's all it is man you do the extra work to get the currency that I need and I can continue you know clearing my maps understanding the economy you play in obviously uh, nemesis is a is a league that Chinese men or Chinamen and Russians and I don't know how many affiliated countries there are that bought this game but they bought and they sell their shit on RMT sites and the fact that standard leagues are the ones that they bought in that's what really hurts the economy and inflates the items you know there's just more currency to make GG gear that's why you see those amazing items on standard there's so many exalts to go around that's why they're so cheap and they're not as valuable as they are on like a, a league like Nemesis. But then you have those uh, intermediaries, uh, you know, those affiliates, those people that are in there in the leagues, just trading, cross realm trading, or uh, trading for the Chinamen. So the people that actually speak English, well, like Sui Ana, I think you guys, many of you guys have seen him. This guy is the prime example. You guys seen him in Domination. Nemesis Hardcore, Standard, every fucking league. He doesn't have a character over like 57 or something. And all he does is work for the Chinamen. He gets the Chinamen the orbs that they need so that they can RMT. So you wonder how all these sites are like, you know, selling uh, whatever Nemesis orbs. They're like, well, if they don't bought ne Nemesis, how are they getting these orbs? They got people working for them that are selling them directly to them. And then they're reselling it to, uh, you know, you guys. But... I do not condone RMT. I don't. I've never, you know, gotten anything from the Chinamen. I often report them when I see them. Uh, it's a sad thing, but I have uh, not successfully seen people that deserve to be banned. Banned. Uh, I'm not gonna say any names, but except for that one Suyana guy, because he he's like really ruins an economy. And when you facilitate RMT or when you promote it, it's only hurting the game. And the fact that, you know, uh, like exalts on standard, you know, this is this is no mystery. I think they're like something like a dollar something, dollar fifty or ninety nine cents. That's how people are able to pay outrageous prices for these items, like these pieces of jewelry. I can demand five exalts for something that would worth be worth like one exalt on Nemesis or half an exalt on Nemesis, but people will pay because they just fucking buy those 99 set ex exalted orbs and you know they just pay that's it ruins the game that's why people are pay, uh, able to get mirrors all the time they have three to five mirrored items um, and that's because you know what a mirror is what 150 exalts so that would make it what a hundred fifty dollar equivalent and dude you see you guys seen people spend thousands upon thousands of dollars it's chump change for them it's fucking disgusting and it's what ruins the economy but that's just fact uh, you can do your part to help prevent it and not participate in it but it screws over the the gamer that's trying to learn this game and trying to do it legitimately any any league that allows death and still keeping your items in that league is gonna be like bought it on that's just that's just how it goes um so that's why you know it, the mirror and uh, nemesis well mirrors often go up or down in value depending upon how many mirrorable items are there there are so if there's more and more gg items then the mirror price is going to go up doesn't matter if they're dagger staff sword the variety of mirrors it's going to become more competitive uh yeah i'm not going to mention any names hilly uh So understand the mirror price, understand that mirror means perfect, and base your items off of that. I, I will continue to you know help people price check just because I do this video. 
of trading and stuff does not mean I, I'm done price checking. Uh, I often like a bunch of cool items that you guys link me. Um, but it's uh, definitely based off of a perfect item. And if you know anything about Diablo 2 and how trading was done in there, a perfect item is exponentially higher which is like you know the chaos orb trades versus the 150 exalt orb trades perfect means perfect people will pay up the ass even if they earned it legitimately like that's why perfect rainbow strides on anarchy sold for combs they traded one for one what the fuck you know a regular rainbow strides was only two to four exalts you know and all of a sudden there's a rainbow stride trading for a combs straight up one for one and that's because rainbow strides are one of the hardest things to roll perfect because of the range and the attributes. So people will pay insanely uh, at high rates or whatever. Like uh, for the longest time, okay, I'm wearing PvP flasks, but like a surgeon's flask of a of granite in a standard and anarchy league, I sold for exalts each when it was a hundred because it was a perfect granite you cannot roll it was really hard to get a hundred in the first place and then to get whatever affix either ample 20 like a 20 an ample 20 with a hundred percent increased armor I could sell for two exalts easily on standard now on nemesis I, I can't sell it for that high but I sell it for 10 chaos a regular flask I'll sell for like two chaos or you know the ones that don't have variances and if it's like 59 or 58 percent, I'll sell it significantly less. If it's 99 percent, it's worth a lot less. So I would say a perfect granite with 100 percent will be 10 chaos. A 99 percent one would be 5 chaos. A 98 percent one would be like three, and then the rest would just be like two. So you can see how how the price scales with perfect means perfect, and that's what I really wanted to establish. That's why when you get for every one perfect roll that's useful on an item, the item exponentially increases, even if it only has a few affixes, because it can be that mirrorable item. And the mirror fees at the moment on standard range from anywhere from 10 to 70 exalts. I mean, that's that's the going rate, and people have to adjust. Okay, so they need to buy this fucking 150 exalt mirror and then they gotta pay a 70 exalt mirror fee you gotta kinda adjust your rares and the good rares up against those mirrored items so if it has five really perfect stats and one really shitty one so it'll never be mirror worthy it'll probably be worth somewhere around 50 percent of mirror value of a mirrored items value I hope that clarifies and doesn't really confuse you guys, but I, I want you guys to see how stuff scales for every one good affix and every tier makes a big, big difference in value. Always need to refer to tiers and that, that mod compendium. Um, this one will tell you what item level you need to get the max tier and what the actual value of that tier is, like energy shield. This is a really good site. Uh, really good check to see which ones which items you want to out what items you want to go for I will do a crafting and um, uh, a crafting and a, what's it called how to make currency video uh, at a later date um, two videos is good enough for now but I just wanted to share uh, how big affixes actually increase and decrease and how much uh, a shit roll can destroy an item in price. A lot of people do not believe in the uh, in the idea of devaluing an item or increasing the value based off of few stats. And that's what is a common misconception. But anybody who knows statistics and probability and all that good shit and understand the game that's the most important understanding the builds understanding the strengths and weaknesses is gonna profit from this so the more you play the more you tune into streams the more you learn you're gonna be you're gonna get all this pretty naturally 
I would make it a habit until you get used to it and then it just becomes in your memory like I know 321 that's the best accuracy after 321 you go to 400 that's a huge fucking gap you know how many rings that I bought at 321 to 325 they didn't know it was perfect accuracy but they're like eh I'll sell it to you for 2x I'm like sold you <laughs> know and then I just divine it a couple times and I'm like rolling with GG items like this ring um, where'd it go only thing about this ring is it's on a shitty base or uh, not a great base alright I think it's right this one yeah like this this when I think I bought it was like 31 it was all bottom rolls and I divined it into fucking something godly and the guy didn't know what he had and he was he was misinformed and I've had many many crazy offers for this ring but I just wanted to emphasize understanding mods and how to price check mediocre and perfect there's a giant gap from mediocre to fucking trash like garbage the, the, the gap from mediocre to garbage is very small very very like it's very very small from the top 95 to 100 percentile is insane like the it's like an exponential curve but uh, I think that's let me go ahead and check Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So one more, one more thing is uh, keeping up with the rates on the server. That's also important. You can do that with friends that play the league. That's the easiest way. Don't rely on those fucking websites that have a chart. I guarantee you, you're fucking yourself over. If anything, people try to scumbag people. This is what this site says. You know, this is what this is worth. But that's not the true value. Um, don't listen to that shit. Ignore that. Look at Trade Chat. Um, use uh, potradechat.org if you need to, or potrade that uh, or um, ask friends because they usually know. Um... Oh, yeah, and one more other thing is be organized. So you see, I have accumulated quite the ordeal of stuff. But if this was all sloppy and shit, you know how I would spend more time trying to find items than trading them. So it's always important. Like I have this shit organized to where I, someone will send me a tell and be like, okay, let's just give me a, let's give an example. I will actually go and find my items through Potrade Chat. So. Let's just say they want to buy this belt, Empyrean Class Heavy Belt. I know I'm I'm already on Nemesis League. I'm not gonna go look at my fucking bank. So I'm just gonna type in what they ask for. Empyrean Class Heavy Belt. I'm gonna make a price check based off of what I see on Potrade Chat. A lot of times, since I have so many items, I have duplicate names. Uh, so I'll ask him which one are you wanting the one with fire resist or the one with wed you know say I had a different one but this will come up and uh, come up a lot I'll give them a price check if they agree then I'll go back and I, I can go straight to my belt tab and it's all organized I only have two two stash tabs with heavy belts and then I just go back and look to the name grab it act one normal trade boom it's so important to be organized I have it organized by type like ES Hybrid, Evasion, Hybrid, Plate. These are all ES Helms, but all the ES Helms, these are Evasion based Helms, Hybrid Helms, more Evasion Helms. Um, my Jewelry, it doesn't take much time to do this, guys. Like, I know you guys are kind of dreading it, but organize this shit. So, as you can see, I have no problems going through and just looking for the first name you know I'll just go over or what I'll do is when, I, when my jewelry shop becomes so massive look how many diamond rings I have like all these holes are the sales that I've made by the way like 
I've consolidated sometimes, like make them nice and tight. But um, what I'll do is I let me link you my thread. Okay, so first off, I throw a disclaimer. Low budget players, please refer to my five chaos grab bag. This means that if the guy's broke, he sees an expensive jewelry shop and he's intimidated, he should, you know, he's rightfully so. What the fuck? Oh, okay, sorry. I copied way too much. So I'll show you the differences in my threads. Uh, my shop is so massive, by the way, that I have to separate my jewelry from my weapons, from my wands, from my armor. Like, I have to have four different threads, and because I can't fit everything on one, pit, on one page. And people complain and bitch about the lag. Like, they're like, every time I go to your shop, it freezes my computer. So I had to, I had to reduce. So that's what I go, went ahead and did. Like, you see a bunch of shit that's, like, unverified. That's all the shit that's sold. But this is the expensive shop. Again, I have ratios listed that I will take equivalents as. I say low, lower, uh, low ballers will be ignored. I do not have items that sell less than 10 chaos. If I think it sells for less than 10 chaos, I don't even keep it. Uh, with the exception of flasks. Do not offer anything less than that when making an inquiry. Please specify which league and what's the exact item name plus base type. I have a lot of items and it's all organized so please include the base type. Thank you. Um, also, on this regret thing, um, quick trades. Five regrets each. Non-negotiable. It's If it's not verified, it's sold. This will save you so much time just saying these few little words. Please mention the base type and the fact that it's in the five. Oh, okay, that's a typo. Five chaos. It should be five regret grab bag. The reason why I changed it from chaos to regrets is because uh, I'm running out of room for chaos and regrets stack to 40, and they're worth more on standard than they are on uh, Nemesis. I think they're like two to one chaos now. So I like this currency unit because I can stack them real nicely versus making more and more stash halves for chaos. So that's, and the fact that it, it by increasing the value that means I'm getting less tells so I'm not switching over as much so yeah it is a little bit of overplaying overpaying so it says I take equivalence with this scale I can also give you change if you don't have divine exalts or whatever uh, IGN and then this command right here global buyout that's what this means so if you have this command written anywhere even in a spoiler it's gonna make everything in this thread show up as a global buyout of that. So let's just let's just show you what I mean. Uh, let's take sorrow coil prismatic ring. All right. So people are going to be more inclined to buy my item versus the others because just for the fact that I have a buyout right here that says five regrets. So they know that they're not going to have to negotiate. They know that I'm online. That's like two things that's just like epic for them. So they're like, okay, uh, no problem. Uh, they might even just ignore a lot of these other ones. But that's just an example. Having that global buyout and that thread just having a surplus can send your low baller people or your low budget players to this place. Like I'm not saying that everything that I have is going to be GG or I don't destroy my lower level, lower valued items. I just put them in a completely different shop altogether. Helms, amulets, rings, belts. And it's the reason why it's like that and not weapons because these are only four slot items in my stash. Belts are two slots. Rings and amulets are one slot. So whenever I'm alking shit, I should probably go over this in my trading video. I'll separate what I think should go in the five regret stash, and I'll separate it from the expensive shop. So I make two piles of how I sort my items, and then I put them in accordingly. Like these last stash tabs, I already have a jewelry tab. 
but these last ones are all the five chaos ones. So if they say, oh, it's in your five chaos grab bag, I immediately go to these last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I have a ten chaos stash. I don't know what this what the fuck thing is. Okay, so what the fuck means? I mean, I have I haven't gone through and sorted these items. As far as wands, I have so many fucking wands that I separate them between wand elemental, wand spell, and wand physical. And I have the remove only tabs from anarchy. So I've crafted a lot of different shit. But you don't want to be the one sitting there, uh, you know, trying to sift through fucking four stash apps of wands. You want to be as organized as you can. Take the time. Invest, invest your time into organizing your items and you will do very well as far as run and gun trading. Uniques are all organized together. Don't be messy with your shit otherwise it's going to be a pain in the ass and you're going to find that you subconsciously neglect trades because you just don't want to deal with the tedium of like looking, looking for it. So you're not going to become as wealthy because it's not easy to trade. And especially when you get those low offers of like two, three chaos, you're just like, man, I don't even feel like dealing with this guy right now. And it's going to take me like 40 seconds. I'm going to make my group wait, you know, and it's just, it's not very motivating. But for me, I'm just like run and gun. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, I got to be right back. Got to make a quick trade. I always make sure if I'm in a map with a map group to be like, are you ready? I'm going to be ready in 10 minutes. You better be there in Act 1 ready, ready to go, because I'm, I'm chaining maps, you know. I don't want to keep my group waiting, that's fucking rude. And if you're as big as a trader as I am, then, you know, you have to make these accommodations to be, you know, friendly, I guess. So, hopefully I've given you some useful tools, useful tips, um, about trading in general price checking, um, understanding value, understanding the curve, um, how to get items that you want at a better price. Um, so it's up to you guys whether or not you want to, you want to take these uh, suggestions and you know practice them or you know it's, it's, it's my opinion it's worked out well for me in all the leagues that I've played in. I played in four different leagues so it applies to every different league. It's not prejudiced to anything. Um, you just have to keep pay attention to rates and um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the segment here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and eternal exalt my staff and see what we get. I'm gonna restart the stream so I have a fresh highlight. See you guys soon. <laughs>